Hello, uh, this is uh, I Go Travel with uh, Don Barnett. I'm down south in Arizona now, but the early part of this video uh, talks about uh, living in an RV through a Canadian winter. It's enough to make you a snowbird, and that's what happened to me. Uh, we start off in the snow, and we end up in the sunshine. Come on, I'll tell you the story. A sunrise over Arizona is a beautiful thing, but this is beautiful too. Nice, clean, clear snow. Look at the picturesque snow. I'm uh, trying to think of a single reason why I might go south like a snowbird. I just can't think of one reason. As you can see, I drained the water in the RV and I've uh, put in uh, the uh, water antifreeze in the lines. You can either blow out your lines with air, compressed air, or you can uh, pump uh, this antifreeze through it. And I'm ready to go. Who's scared of a Canadian winter? I'm staying. People who try to stick out a Canadian winter uh, get their trailers ready. Uh, look at here. Uh, the wind, the cold wind, can't get underneath this trailer. And plenty of propane tanks are ready to do the heat job. Inside our camper, we had to uh, be careful to always be aware that our heater was always a safe distance from anything burnable. Heater should have an automatic uh, uh, switch off that turns off the heater if it gets tipped over. If that shut off stops working, it is time to throw away your heater. But I started to get second thoughts about winterizing uh, uh, through a Canadian winter. I could not get the snow to uh, melt at the back door of the camper. It was mid-morning here and we just uh, were above uh, freezing at plus two. I noticed we never went below the zero mark, so that meant we were always above freezing. However, there were times I know we had ice on the water if we happened to leave a glass of water on the counter overnight. Then I realized that the heater did not register temperatures below the freezing or zero point. Uh, this is what we did use, uh, the on switches for our uh, two electric blankets. Uh, we were under those blankets uh, day and night in the cold weather. I uh, slept with my uh, toque on, and uh, socks uh, seem to be an automatic uh, part of our uh, flannel uh, pajamas. And here's another part of uh, keeping the bed warm system. That red thing on the right uh, called a hot water bottle. We were heating up uh, the hot water in the tea kettle to pour into it. Uh, the steam is coming now, the water's heating up, uh, we're getting ready. Okay, I'll just uh, screw out the uh, plug here in the hot water bottle, and uh, I'll be pouring the water in that hole into the, the bottle, and uh, I'm just reaching for the hot water. Got to be careful, it's steaming hot, don't want to make a mistake and pour uh, some water over my hand. I've done that before and that's no fun. Okay, careful, in goes the hot water. The rubber hot water bottle gets warm, uh, gets thrown in the bed and uh, your feet will certainly appreciate it. When everything freezes up and you can't flush anything, you have to resort to the plastic grocery bag method. Set the bag in the toilet, do your thing, wrap it up tight, and carry it away. Uh, just a minute, my uh, cameraman wants to say something. What's that? We have to uh, edit that out of the uh, video? Why? It's too, uh, it's too private. It's not in good taste. Well, it's not uh, too private. Everybody has to attend to that kind of thing. It has to go? Are you sure? Okay, okay. I will personally see that it is edited out of the film. You've got my word on it. You know what that cameraman doesn't understand? Is that my word is no good. And uh, doing this job every morning, uh, 
started to make me have some second thoughts. Uh, even though I was prepared, you can see I had a blue uh, canvas tarp over the uh, windshield to, to keep the frost uh, having uh, to uh, scrape it off every morning. So uh, I was uh, prepared and uh, ready for uh, everything there. I've got to put the uh, windshield wipers up to keep them from freezing and ripping off. And uh, But the snow kept a coming. And the more snow and more snow and the even more snow. It melted once in a while, just enough to let the icicles form. And uh, here you can see the icicles uh, froze up uh, the doors in the camper. I had to chisel this door out to get outside one day. I started to have second thoughts about uh, fighting out a Canadian winter. My wife said we uh, should have left before the snow and the cold came. But I kept uh, hanging back, uh, saying we don't need to go. But uh, maybe I made a mistake. As you can see, the road literally was getting narrower and narrower. In the morning, uh, the butter was so hard, we had to melt it in the frying pan before being able to spread it onto our toast. And the peanut butter came out in hard chunks that broke up uh, our toast when we tried to spread it. You know uh, the problem of uh, freezing water and that whole uh, bathroom uh, situation uh, paled in comparison to the final problem that uh, finally broke this old uh, camel's back. I got up in the morning uh, to start the day off right, uh, a good cup of coffee. Uh, this is the coffee grounds from the day before, so I went to uh, dump them out and uh, make a new pot of coffee. But overnight, it got so cold in the camper that the wet coffee grounds froze in the coffee maker. I uh, ripped and tore and scraped out the frozen grounds. Uh, I tried to, but about all I did was tear the frozen, the wet, uh, fragile coffee filter. I even tried to scrape off the frozen coffee grounds with a knife. Uh, now, uh, we can't use our usual plates and cups and uh, other utensils beca because we have this situation of uh, frozen water and can't do much uh, dishwashing. So we use the, the plastic stuff, the throwaway stuff. But these cheap throwaway uh, knives and spoons broke without effort. I'm telling you, it was the end of the trail. One night, uh, we were uh, in bed, uh, ready to uh, fall asleep, and bang, a rifle shot. We leaped out of bed. I uh, opened up the blind a bit to see uh, what was going on in the campground and uh, couldn't see anything. Well, then, we went to sleep. Next day, uh, we wondered what that could be. And then the following uh, night, uh, we're sound asleep. Bang, another rifle shot. We leap up again, can't figure it out. What's going on? Well, a couple of days later, I said to my wife, you know, we're ready to uh, have a little bit of a, a meal here. Uh, I think I'll drink a, a can of beer before supper. I like to do that once in a while, so I did that. And I opened up the cupboard, and there inside the uh, beer case, exploded beer cans. They had frozen solid and uh, swelled up and uh, broke the can and it sounded like rifle shots. That was the mystery of the rifle shots. It was time to maybe to get thinking uh, maybe uh, heading south like a snowbird wasn't uh, really uh, such a bad idea. Enough of this snow. We uh, threw the bikes on the carrier, chained them down and uh, hit the road. Uh, we stayed uh, in the cheap seats uh, at a Walmart sometimes, but uh, also at truck stops. I don't like to stop at the rest stops along uh, uh, the middle of the highway somewhere isolated and alone. Uh, I think the truck stops are uh, a lot safer with people around, but those diesels uh, rattling all night uh, uh, really uh, help you uh, uh, come up with a sound sleep. I can tell you some nightmare stories of rough travel and storms on this road. When you see uh, snow fences like this, 
uh, you know that you're in snow country and hope there's no storm a coming. Interstate 15 has got uh, several high passes uh, on its route, and uh, one of them is called Maida Pass. And I'll tell you the uh, happiest uh, sight you'll ever see is Maida Pass in your rearview mirror. This shows where we went. We left Canada. We took the Interstate 15 through Salt Lake City, down as far as Las Vegas area, and then headed south following the Colorado River, uh, eventually to Yuma. Uh, we're going through Salt Lake City uh, here. Uh, this is the Mormon Temple. We're in Mormon country. Uh, it is a, a long uh, uh, freeway uh, through Salt Lake City, but keep uh, in your lane and toward the right, and it is straight sailing right on through. Things were warming up, and uh, we dumped our septic tank in uh, southern uh, Utah or Nevada, and uh, we were in uh, snowbird country. We're here in our kind of country out in the desert and uh, boondocking it and making a nice campfire and uh, enjoying the warmth. We came down Interstate 15 uh, into southern uh, Utah, uh, past uh, St. George and then into Nevada. Uh, Highway 169, we pulled off the interstate and followed a two-lane road along the uh, edge of Lake Mead, eventually to Hoover Dam, and we were able to get uh, around uh, Las Vegas uh, on a two-lane quieter road. And we also passed the uh, Valley of Fire. I made a video of that uh, in the uh, Las Vegas uh, videos on my website. Uh, a lot of red rock, beautiful stuff in there. We are several kilometers from the Valley of Fire State Park, but the rock here is a reddish and, and other uh, variations of color. That, But it's rough country, and we rode our bikes down in through some of the crevices and valleys here. But we had to be careful because uh, for old-timers like us, as you can see, even the main roads that we were on were uh, rocky and steep. But it's great country. We had to push up this hill here and... Uh, but still a very enjoyable biking kind of stuff. I would say it's a good intermediate uh, kind of a biking. Uh, the, the wind and erosion has affected the rocks. This is the highway across uh, a bridge here. We're on our way to uh, Las Vegas uh, on the edge, uh, on the eastern edge of the city near Hoover Dam. And the big lake, of course, is called Lake Mead. We are uh, leaving the uh, red rock behind and uh, encountering more of the, the gray and brown uh, kind of landscape. But it's a nice quiet road and a nice quiet way to uh, get into and past Las Vegas. There's a glimpse of Lake Mead in the distance. Uh, yeah, we made the videos uh, on uh, Hoover Dam and Lake Mead in the Arizona section of my website, and you can see them there. And we had a nice bike ride through a, a number of uh, tunnels on an old abandoned railroad that was uh, built to uh, bring supplies in uh, to the construction of Hoover Dam. And that's in the other video, like I said. You can see one of the parking areas uh, for uh, bicycling the old abandoned railroad bed and the railway bed. You can make out the line as it moves to the right from the parking lot. Here are some people using the trail near the tunnels. And uh, this is uh, one of the tunnels uh, along the trail. We are on the uh, paved trail uh, leading away from Hoover Dam and the uh, tunnels. Uh, like I said, uh, th those are in the other video. So we're headed the other direction. A nice paved trail, as you can see, uh, smooth, and uh, it goes through uh, the desert country. Uh, Lake Mead would be to the right of us uh, in the lower part. Uh, you can't see any of the water. We might get a glimpse of it once in a while. But it's a ways back up from the lake, and it follows the... Uh, a western shore of the lake. There's a, a bit of the water there in the distance. But it was a nice, enjoyable ride and uh, quite level. Uh, it's, uh, as you can see, uh, probably a beginner level trail. And there's a number of uh, 
nice campgrounds, state parks and that along this area. And we're sitting here at one of them where we stayed at. And then the next day we were back on that trail again. Uh, the trail is not that long. I'm not sure if it's 10 or might be 10 or 15 uh, kilometers in length. Uh, no more than that. But uh, it's nice and level and a nice exercise ride. It's a beginner kind of a railway bed. Uh, it's not a railway bed. It's an actual uh, rail trail that joins up with the abandoned railroad bed closer to uh, the dam. Again, you can see a, a bit of Lake Mead to the right there. And there's a number of, uh, th this has been a long-term kind of a tourist area out of Las Vegas. It's not too far from Vegas, probably an hour or so, and uh, still quite a popular uh, place. We missed a lot of the freeway of the main part of Vegas by uh, coming this route. And... Uh, after a couple of days of uh, riding here and, and relaxing in the state park uh, campground, uh, we uh, threw the bikes uh, on the back of the old camper and uh, strapped them down and uh, started to look for Highway 95 South. And uh, we weren't too long. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we're still on this bike uh, trail along uh, Lake Mead. Uh, very relaxing and enjoyable kind of a ride. Typical desert uh, country. Uh, little dry. It was in the uh, winter. We're uh, here in uh, January. And uh, as you can see, it's still green. But of course, in the spring, uh, the desert will uh, have uh, various uh, flowers uh, growing. And it, uh, it, it pretties up quite a bit in the spring. Okay, a little more of this trail and uh, we are headed uh, south on uh, Highway 95, south of Vegas, on the way to Yuma. Okay, uh, we're down south here. I have to trade off this uh, cap for a hat and a pair of sunglasses. Uh, we're uh, headed uh, south uh, all the way to near the Mexican border in this series of videos. So uh, follow us along. Uh, if you liked uh, what you saw, uh, hit the subscribe button. That tells you when uh, we're uh, able to uh, bring another video up onto uh, the internet. So uh, until then, uh, I'll see you at the next stop. Follow me as we head south uh, from Las Vegas. This is I Go Travel with uh, Don Barnett.